Hello and welcome to Chapter 12, Key Issue 1, where we're taking a look at where are services distributed. Listen, if you're getting these recordings in the spring of 2017 and you've had to wait for Chapter 12, I apologize to you. I've had a whole bunch going on and you guys are my highest priority because I love to make these videos because I, I know they help all of us understand the material more. So, sorry about the delay. Let's jump in here on Chapter 12, Key Issue 1. There's three types of services. We're talking about services. These are the things that you create for customers. Services generate more than two-thirds the GDP, the gross domestic product, in most developed countries compared to less than one-half in most developing countries. What we're saying is, if you're talking about services and you're in a developed country, you're doing things like uh, accounting, legal, back office duties, um, things that people aren't going to be like on their hands and knees doing manufacturing or farming and all that. In developing countries, they're still working on jobs. They're still working on getting money from farming and maybe manufacturing industry. Services were in developed countries. The distribution of service workers is opposite that of the percentage of primary workers. So where you're finding these services are in the developed countries. Look at that. Western Europe, North America. Australia, where you have highly developed countries. <clears throat> Consumer services. To provide services to individual customers who desire them and can afford to pay for them. Nearly one half of all jobs in the U.S. are customer services. This is where you are creating things for people to purchase, for people to consume. We're talking about retail and wholesale, education, health and social services, and leisure and hospitality. Now, just to start off the bat, when we're talking about education, we're not talking about public school teachers. That's, that's, public school teachers are funded within the public services. Uh, these are more like private schools where you're choosing to purchase these educational services. Retail and wholesale, these are department stores, grocery stores, motor vehicle sales, and wholesalers that produce merchandise to retails. Health and social services, we're talking about hospitals, healthcare, doctor's offices, nursing homes, and social assistance. And leisure and hospitality, we use those all the time, right? In the, developing, the developed world, we go to restaurants, bars, lodging, arts and entertainment. I mean, you guys, if you're in high school, better not be going to bars, right? Thank you. But you can see the huge amount that's devoted to retail and wholesale. We're buying stuff all the time. People make their living off of creating items for people to purchase. A healthcare industry is, is also huge as well. Think about all of the hospitals, doctor's offices, nursing homes. These are consumer services that people have the option to purchase. Business services. To facilitate the activities of other businesses. One-fourth of all the jobs in the United States are within business services. We're talking about things like professional services, law, management, accounting, architecture, engineering, design, consulting, clerical, secretarial, and custodial. And financial services. We've got finance, insurance, real estate, or fire. This is the term that it's called. Hey, do you work in fire? No, I'm not a firefighter anymore. I used to be. Actually, that's true. I used to be a firefighter. But that's the term for finance, insurance, real estate. These are these financial services, fire. Um, or the transportation or information services, where you're transporting goods and services or people, trucking, warehousing, publishing, broadcasting, water and electricity. These are things that you're having to uh, purchase as part of a, a business structure. Public services to provide security protection for citizens and businesses. So when we say excluding educators, one six work for the federal government. That doesn't mean that educators are excluded from the public sector. And this is kind of confusing in your textbook. So when we say public services, it does include educators. But what this factor is saying one-sixth of the people working for public services are in the federal government, one-fourth for the state government, and three-fifths for local government. So there's a huge chunk that is set up in local governments. Um, <clears throat> and that does include public school educators. It's just the only reason they said this is because this, this fact doesn't include those numbers. But public services, we're talking about police officers. We're talking about firefighters. Rising and then falling service employment. The service sector has shown the most growth, but it's also been hit the hardest since the recession in 2008. And if you're re reading Rubenstein's textbook from 2011, 2008 was, was relatively recent after the 2008 recession. And we know that lots of people were affected because of that housing crash, that housing bubble that burst. 
The changes in the number of employees. Growth has occurred in the services where primary and secondary activities has declined. So if it we're in a developed country, we're not going to see a lot of growth in primary and secondary sectors like in agriculture or mining. We're going to see a lot of growth in uh, the tertiary and quaternary sectors where people are getting jobs in accounting and law and business and all that. Services in the recession. The service sector has been the engine of growth for developing for developed countries, even as industry and agriculture have declined. But service sector triggered the recession. Again, if you're in a developed country, services are going to fuel your economy. Our farming and the primary secondary sector is going to decline because we're not doing those things so much anymore in the developed countries. Recession, um, it was caused by the service sector because there was the housing market bubble. The housing market crash, but it still fuels the economy for developed countries. And that's our quick look at chapter 12, key issue one. Yeah, that's all there is.